Chocolate Talk Times. How are you doing? I hope you are doing well. Are you ready to learn more about red blood cell antigen? Today, we are on the topic of Rh blood group antigen. I will cover how to express Rh antigen in fisheries and renal terminology. We will also do some examples together of how to convert between the two of them. I will also cover a little bit about the history of Rh antigen, just because it is good to know the history. If you want to know more about Rh antigen bread group, please keep on watching. I also included timestamps for a quick reference. Without further ado, let us get into it. Rh blood group is the second most important blood group system in terms of transfusion. This is because the Rh antigens are very immunogenic and capable of causing hemolytic transfusion reaction. When the patient have been exposed to a non-self Rh antigens, the patients are likely to produce antibody against those antigens. These antibodies are capable of initiating immune response. Did you hear a keyword I said? The keyword I said was exposed. The patient has to be exposed to the non-self Rh antigens in order for the patients to make antibodies against it. Therefore, Rh antibodies are not naturally occurring antibodies, unlike the anti-A and anti-B in ABO blood group antigen. There are over 60 different antigens in the Rh blood group systems. We will not cover them all, that will be way too much. But we will be going over 5 antigens from the Rh antigen blood groups. There are D, big C, little c, big E, and little e. These five are the most important ones. The term Rh positive and Rh negative refer to the presence or the absence of the D antigen. Testing for the D antigen is routinely done with the patient ABO blood group types because D antigen is considered to be the most immunogenic of all antigen. We know that because 50% of Rh negative recipients who were at some point exposed to Rh positive blood developed D antibody. This is why it is very important for the Rh negative mother to receive Rh immunoglobulins or Rh Ig. If you want to learn more about the Rh Ig, I made a video about it already. You can find a link to it in the description box down below. I will start out with the terminology. There are different ways to refer to Rh antigen. I will cover fisheries terminology and winner terminology. Fisheries is terminology based on the three closely linked genes. This is commonly used in writing to clearly indicate the presence or absence of the antigen. Winner terminology is more commonly used in spoken language because it is shorter. It is important to be able to interchange between the two because they are commonly used in workplace and likely to show up on the exam as well. First up, fisheries. Rule for fisheries terminology. Rule number one. To indicate the presence of the antigen, write the antigen in uppercase. Rule number two. To indicate the absence of antigen, write the antigen in lowercase. And rule number three. For an Rh negative patient, you can choose to write little d or omit the d. When practicing, I will suggest you to write the little d in place of a big D. However, formally, we do not write the little d to represent the absence of D antigen. Here is a table showing the Rh antigen in fisheries terminology for Rh positive and Rh negative. Keep this chart handy and let's try to write Rh antigens using fisheries terminology based on these word problems. If you have an Rh positive patient with C antigen and missing E antigen, how would you write that using fisheries terminology? You may pause the video and try to write it first using the rule that we just talked about. We know that the patient is an Rh positive patient, so we write down the uppercase D. Next, antigen the patient has is C antigen. Will you write uppercase or lowercase c? Yes, that is correct. You would write an uppercase C because the patient has C antigen. The last one is E antigen. 
the patient is missing E antigen. Will you write an uppercase or lowercase e? Missing antigen represent with lowercase e. So you would write a lowercase e. When you put it all together, you will have big D, big C, and little e. Let's work on one with Rh negative patients. An Rh negative patient with E antigen and no C antigen. Try to write it out if you need to pause the video before continue on. The patient is Rh negative, so you can choose to write lowercase d to represent there's no d antigens or don't write anything at all. However, when I first started to learn about how to write d's, I would write a lowercase d just for a placeholder so I don't get confused later on. Moving on to the E antigen. We know that the patient has E antigen. This means that we would have to write E in an uppercase to represent the presence of the E antigen. Next, we missing C antigen. Will you write that in an uppercase or lowercase? Yes, it will be in a lowercase because it is a missing antigen. Once we put it together, we will have little d, little c, big E, or you can just have little c, big E. Next is Winner Terminology. Rule number one, in Winner Terminology, use capital R to represent the presence of anti D. Rule number two, little r is used to represent the absence of anti D. Rule number three, C antigen is noted by number 1 in Rh positive or primes in Rh negative. Rule number 4. E antigen is noted by number 2 in Rh positive and double primes in Rh negative. Rule number 5. The absence of both C and E antigens are noted by 0 in Rh positive and nothing for the Rh negative. Rule number 6. The presence of both C and E antigen are noted by Z for the Rh positive and Y for the Rh negative. I know it can be a little bit confusing, but here's the table you can refer back to it at any time. Now let's work on an example. An Rh positive patient with C antigen and missing E antigen, how would you write that in winner? The patient is Rh positive, which means we will write an uppercase R. Next, the patient has C antigen and C antigen associated with number 1. So when we put that together, we will have uppercase R with subscription number 1. Let's try with one more example. An Rh negative patient with E antigen and no C antigen. How would you write that in Wiener terminology? This patient is an Rh negative patient, which means the patient is missing D antigen. So, missing D antigen will be represented with lowercase r. Now, keep in mind that the E antigen is associated with number 2 for Rh positive and double prime for Rh negative. Since this patient is an Rh negative patient, we would have to use the double prime. When we put that together, we would have little r, superscript, double prime. Here is a table comparing the Rh antigen in fisheries and Wiener terminology. History In 1939, Levine and Stetson described a hemolytic transfusion reaction in a pregnant patient as follows. There was a complication and it led to a mother who delivered a stillborn needing a blood transfusion. Her husband was selected to be her donor since they have the same ABO blood type. There should not be any complications but there was one. Can you think what could go wrong? They have the same ABO blood type. This shows you how little we knew about blood transfusions back then. A few moments after the mother received blood transfusions, she experienced classic symptoms of 
acute hemolytic transfusion reactions, or AHTR. Some of the symptoms are high fever, hypertension, bloody urine, respiratory distress, and back pain. Since the patient experienced acute hemolytic transfusion reactions, more testings and investigations were done. It's concluded that the mother had antibodies against common antigens shared between father and the fetus. This story also tells you that selecting a unit to be transfused is not as simple as just picking up a unit with the same blood type or simply just give a patient group O RBC. There is a whole list of things that needed to be done as a part of compatibility testing before issuing a unit for a routine blood transfusion. Chemistry, Microbiology If you have any burning questions, please feel free to leave me a comment down below. Lastly, if you have not done so, please like, share, subscribe, and click the notification bell. I will see you in the next episode of Blood Talks. And as always, remember, your blood tells you the story of your health. Thanks for watching. Bye!